Hi, and welcome back to another project. I showed you how to make a pair of these earrings and I worked really hard to figure out a way to make a ring to match because you know I love beaded rings very, very much. So I tweaked a few things here and there and I figured it out. And this is the ring. And it's absolutely beautiful on. So, it's just one change which made everything work perfectly so no threads are showing. It buckled just a little bit so there's a little bit of height but not too much but I think it came out so, so cool. So I'm going to show you on this colorway. The only thing you have to be familiar with is the ladder stitch because I'm not going to be showing you the entire process of sewing this together. It's so easy. I'll get you started and then you'll be able to go from there. The material list is very, very light. So you're only going to need some 11s and 15s. And they're both Toho. You're going to need six Ginkgo beads, six Super Duos, and six 4mm Swarovskis. That's it. And this is going to be a fun one. It's just so mind-boggling to me how one small 15 made the difference, and that was it. So let's get started. I have my eight pound fire line, a size 11 beading needle, but I also have a size 13 beading needle on hand just in case there's tight spots, and I don't wanna stress out the work at all. So we're going to begin the same way we did with the earrings. We're going to pick up, um, I'm sorry, we're doing it differently. I'm sorry, we're going to pick up a super duo and a size 11 six times. So you want to have six 11s and six super duos, just like this. Sorry, I don't have any jewelry on today. I literally just got out of the shower, started playing with this design. And I knew I immediately had to do it right away or I would forget. <laughs> so that's the truth. So now with the earrings, we couldn't throw any knots in. So this is great. We can throw knots in. We don't have to worry about all that. So we're going to slide it down on one and a half yards of thread. And we're going to pick up our work, leave a small tail, and we're going to tie it into a knot. Let it grab just like that wrap it around my fingers and give it a really good pull and I'm going to attach a needle to the tail and we're going to get rid of this right away that's another good thing we couldn't do that with the earrings because we were working with those teeny tiny 15s I'm just trying to open that up there we go okay so I'm going in this direction I'm going to go right through just a couple beads three beads and then right here, I'm gonna pick up that thread space. And before I pull that loop, I put my needle in and I'm gonna pull down really hard. Do that two times. And then I'm gonna weave away and burn. And we're all set with that tail. Let me get as close as I can there. Okay. Now I just wanna run around this entire piece one time. So take your time and go through all the beads so that it is nice and straight and solid and secure. You still want to have that nice tight center right here, which it is. And this is how you do it, just reinforcing. That's pretty much all you have to know with this ring. And this one little step that just changed everything. And that's what I think is so cool. One small bead just made the difference and turned it into a really, really stunning ring. I really wanted a ring to match, so I was kind of obsessing about it until I finally came up with something. Okay, so mine feels really good. I'm ready to turn, so I'm coming out of the bottom hole of this Super Duo. I'm just going to jump into that upper hole. And I'm actually going to move that because I know I'm going to get snagged on it. 
So we're just gonna do the same thing, but this time we're going to pick up a 15, the right hole of a ginkgo bead, three 11s. We're still going to slide our work down, drop it right down, and we're gonna go through the empty hole of the ginkgo bead plus the super duo. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before we do that, we have to pick up another 15 and then go through the super duo. That's the step that we need right there. So two 15s right there. That helps it bend without showing any thread. So I'll go really slow. A 15, the right hole, three 11s, and then I'm gonna slide it down and go through that empty hole, and I'm not gonna forget this time to pick up my 15. So I'm gonna pick up my 15 and then go right through that next super duo, just like this. And that's gonna be your repeat all the way around. So a 15, right hole, three 11s, and then I'm gonna slide it down. I absolutely love these colors together too. And then go through that hole, second hole of the ginkgo bead right there. Pick up a 15 and then go right into that super duo. And we'll do this all the way around. Isn't that weird, that one little tiny 15 is what made that happen. And here I was struggling, like I could not figure out why it wouldn't bend properly and conform to my finger the right way. And it was just that one bead, which that's it. One tiny little 15. That's what I absolutely love about beading is it's so challenging. It keeps my brain constantly working and always thinking and that's just something that I love. I am a Gemini and I always need to have something going on. I can't just sit still or I can't sit down and watch TV. I always have to be doing something while I'm watching TV. So that's just my personality. I'm, I'm <laughs> very active like that. Okay, so here's our last 15. Our beautiful ginkgo bead, three elevens. I'm gonna slide it down, go through there, and pick up a 15, and now run right through this super duo. We're at the end. I'm just gonna pull and make sure there's no tangles. Pull nice and secure, make sure everything looks good. That is so pretty. And then um, right up through this little tiny 15 and I know it's hard to get in there so just take your time so you don't skid off and slip okay right up through there and the ginkgo bead and now we're gonna step out the third 11 we're gonna do the same exact step we're gonna pick up one 11 one four millimeter bicone. I wanna make sure I'm not too, too close on it. There you go. Okay, so 11, a four millimeter bicone, 11, and then we're just gonna run right through these three. And you want this to buckle. It's going to start um, caving in just a little bit, and you want that this time. With the earrings, I did not want that. So that was the whole problem. Okay, so it's just an 11 by cone 11 right through the next three. We're gonna do this all the way around. And I ran out of my pretty little orange beads so I had to settle for the gold, but I thought it would look pretty cool anyway because I used a gold finding. So if I wanna wear it to match until I get my favorite beads in. Um, I don't know what the obsession is with that color, but I love it, that saffron. 
rarely do I ever blow through an entire tube of seed beads that quickly, but I just love it. Okay, so here we are at the last stitch, and this is important. We're going to go through like a normal stitch, and then we're going to continue through a few more. This is where we want this a lot tighter. You see all this slack and movement in here? That's something we don't want. So we're going to step out the 11 right before that bicone. We're ready to add a little decoration over the top. So we're going to pick up five 15s and go right over the top of that bicone into the next five 11s. And we'll do this all the way around. And no herringbone today either. So, so five 15s, jump over that bicone and go through the next five 11s. Yes, I decided to put a ladder stitch on it because it fit the, the ring way more better. It was just so beautiful when I put it all together. Okay, so through there, and you can feel how loose everything is, and we're gonna fix that, so don't worry. One, two, three, four, five. Jump over that bicone and go through these beads right here. Oh my goodness, they're bouncing all over on me. Okay. Keep going, we have one more stitch. right over and now what we have to do is reinforce this whole thing so we're going to run through all these beads and i want see how these points are really defined on the 15s this is how i do it i'm coming out this 11 i'm going to go up these three 15s and I'm gonna put my needle down and literally literally pull really hard then go down these two and into the group of 11s all the way over and then I'm gonna go up those three again and pull really tight and that is gonna keep that crisp um, point that I'm going for there so just all that's all it is is just um, reinforcing. So up these three, and then I put my needle down, and I'm going to give it a good pull, and then keep going down these two, and we'll do this all the way around. One, two, three. Pull, and then right down. And you'll feel it get real snug. And that's when I'm going to switch down to a 15 if it gets too, too hard. So, so I don't crack a bead. All right. For the moment, I'm okay. We're almost there. Because see how nice and defined that looks? So right after this set right here, we're going to go through just three size 11s, I'm, I'm sorry, four, a total of four. So one, two, three, and four. And it's tight in here, so take your time. This is the only hard part is starting this ladder stitch in this tight area, because we've been through this so many times. So we're all done with the 15s. We're gonna grab some 11s. And we're going to begin the ladder stitch, and all it is is we're going to pick up three. We're coming out in this direction. We're going to bring it around and go back through these three in this direction. This is very tight and very important, but we have to reinforce. So we're going to go back down these three and right back up these. And take your time and wiggle if you feel like there's too much thread in there and it's going to crack switch down to um your size 13 me I don't have I I don't have patience I'm sorry 
I have to be honest. So I just will wiggle and make it work unless I really feel like it's gonna crack. Okay, and that's it. That's all you'll do for the ladder stitch. Just pick up three. Now I'm coming down this way. I'm gonna bring them around and go right through the three elevens in this direction now. So we pull right back up because we have to reinforce and then back down. Otherwise your work will separate on you and then right back up. That's it. And that's all you're gonna do. So now I'm coming out this way so I know I'm gonna come around and go through in this direction. Back down. And then up and down. And we're ready to start another one. So pick up three. Come around this way. And right back up. And down. This is a very, very sturdy stitch too. Um, as long as you do your reinforcing, this thing will not fall apart on you. Just make sure you reinforce and you pull really hard. So it's three, down those three, right back up and down. Okay. And that's all you'll do. I want to get it a little bit longer just so I can show you how to join it. But I'm not going to do the full band because this is it. <laughs> that's how simple it is. One, two, three. All right, back around. And joining it is just very, very easy. Very, very simple. And see if we didn't do that reinforcement right there, all that thread would just start to show and it would separate and the whole ring would split. So that's why that step is so important. All right, let's see where I'm at here. A little bit more, like four more rows, and then I'll show you how to attach it. And then I'll take it apart and then I'll build it longer, of course. But I just want you to see how very, very simple it is. Oh, I already reinforced. I was going to do it again. Okay. So up this way. I'm keeping count in my head of how many rows I just put on. And you can see how tight my tension is because it leaves the indentations in your fingers. All right. Okay, let's see. So all you would do is fold it over and find the other side that matches perfectly to where you are so you're gonna line it up I use my thread as a guide right here so I know I'm gonna join it right here to these three 11s and be very careful so you would go up like this and then right back down and then you would reinforce that again and then you would sew it together real tightly and then you would have a finished ring. And that is gorgeous. I'm just gonna see what it looks like. I've, I'm really, really anxious to finish this one, so I wanna see how beautiful. And that is absolutely stunning. So I really hope you enjoyed this project. It was so much fun coming up with this design. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.